On Sunday is when Manchester United is returning into action after a total draw with Tottenham Hotspur into the Premier League. And we all know that it was a game that we thought that would have gone ahead to win because we had the chances and we fended poorly and we gave our easy chances. And that marked the start of our new year 2024 and we are not going to really look back but let's look at the new game that you're going to play on sunday newport it's a league two side that you're going to play in the fa cup remember to get to this level we went ahead to really knock out wigan right i think that's what, that was our first game that we played i think this year we knocked out wigan by three goals i think it was two goals to nail it was um diego dalo and Bruno Fernandes scoring a penalty around the 70, 72nd minute to make it 2 0 for the club of Manchester United. Welcome to this channel. Smash the like button, comment, and share. If you're watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Roden Parade is the stadium where this game of football is going to be taking place. It shows you that it's really still a small stadium and it capacitates 8,700 people. And I don't know how many tickets they are going to give the the away ongoing fans of the club of money because it looks like they are gonna really have a very big day to obviously see themselves really thrive down there so we wait and see how things pan out but it looks like it's gonna be a big game at the side of man united the players that are gonna be out are anton martial is not expected to be part of this because he's out for 10 weeks tarell malasia he's back on the grass but it looks like Ten Hag won't hurry him back. Mason Mount is also back on the grass, but Ten Hag doesn't want to hurry him back. And who else is still injured? So, the others that are really away are, are, are away because of the African Cup of Nations. That is Sofian Hamrabat. is really one of those players that is not going to be av available after his team qualified for the round of... After his team qualified for the round of uh, 16 of the African Cup of Nations. And... Uh, and Rionana, who is really out because Cameroon qualified to go to the round of 16 and they are going to face Nigeria, that is tomorrow on the 27th. So that's how the draws really went and Man United is having close to five players out. But there is some good news. <coughs> Casemiro is back. Good news to hear. Um, Harry Maguire is back. That is it. He trained with the club. Luke Shaw also is back. He trained with the club. We thought it was going to be available as we play against Tottenham Hotspur, but he wasn't available. And the manager told us that there was a late minute setback and he never wanted to obviously risk him into that game. So, as it stands, Linderov is also a doubt, but the rest of the players are readily available to obviously come in through and represent for the side of Manchester United. It's a moment that we have to seize to obviously make this game an easy win for the club of Man United because if you're playing a league two side, you just have to go ahead and obviously make what we call a statement win. And <clears throat> this is a game where I would like to see players like Rasmus Hoyland scoring a hat trick. That is it. I would like to see him score a hat trick and take his study to 10 because if we keep flying in the FA Cup, he's going to score very many goals. I told you 20 goals onto the head of that boy and having gone ahead to score into the previous two consecutive games in the Premier League against uh, Aston Villa and against Graham Hotspur, I think he can extend his form and lethalness into this game of football. Amadi Diallo is also out in the game of the Tottenham Hotspur. He never made it to the bench, but it looks like this time around he's readily available to take part into the team of Manchester United as we wait and see how things really pan out. For Newport, um, they're having Townstead, they're having a little group of players that most of you have never even heard of, but I cannot come in here and obviously not talk about Palm Holden. Palm Holden is one of the center forwards and they play a system of 5-3-2, meaning that they are going to deploy the same system as they're taking on Manchester United. But we all know that Newport is going to pack the bus. There is no way they are going to play at front foot. <laughs> that is it. They can't play high line against Man United. They are going to put up a low block and it's going to be about us to obviously unlock it and obviously score the goals that we want. But for the team as Newport, this is huge than them qualifying to go to the next round because 
they are going to get in a lot of money. Trust me, the tickets are at abnormal prices. And they come in this game when they're really having a very huge boost because they went ahead to beat Wrexham by one goal to nil. And at home, it looks like they're really doing great, but they are going to be facing a club of Manchester United that just needs to go on and really go to the fifth round. And that fifth round, I think it will see us really get a stronger team. But we should obviously get <clears throat> in the know that Manchester United is a team that might face either Tottenham or Manchester City. Liverpool is facing which time? Is it Aston Villa? Aston Villa is facing Chelsea. So there are lots and lots and lots of teams that are still in. But I think we have all what it takes to win this FA Cup because we are going to be playing one game per one game per week and that will give us enough rest and these players will recharge their batteries and obviously do the need for if at all last season we are playing two games per week and we happen to play in two finals and qualified for the champions league then why not see this happen the system four to three one as usual coming in through from <coughs> the dutch Ake, that is the manager of man united that is eric ten Hag. now in goal we anticipate that a debut of ben de year is gonna be happening on sunday that is it. His debut is going to be happening on Sunday as Andrew Yonana is away. One might be scared that maybe Tom Heaton might obviously get in between the stitches, but I think it's going to be time for none other than Ben Deir to obviously get his debut in for the club of Man United ever since he signed from Fanabachi on a five-year deal. In there for you. So Ben Deir is expected to be in between the stitches away and... If at all he goes ahead to put in a very thrilling performance, trust me, it's going to put in a very huge question mark to the performances of Andrew Yonana because the Cameroon national team coach has gone ahead to drop him and we don't know whether Andrew Yonana will obviously get into the starting 11 as Cameroon takes on Nigeria. If he has gone ahead to be dropped and he was not part of the team, I don't think he's going to return to that national team of Cameroon. He will say, all right, however much I come there, I'm not picked so why do i have to focus onto that side let me focus on the team of man united that sees a lot of value in me and they are willing to obviously take me to where i want to be as a player that is it coming in through from none other than andrew Rana. but ben Deir is expected to make his debut for the club of Manchester united right back it's none other than diego dalo i think diego dalo is going to go back into his favorite position as the right back of man united and remember against tottenham Hotspur, he played as a right back and Bisaka was played as a left back because of Pedro Poro. And Ten Hag had come up with a system that Rashford shouldn't obviously track back a lot and wanted to beat that space between Pedro Poro and the defenders of Tottenham Hotspur, but never worked on well because Rashford was really very, 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 very wasteful in that game. So I think this time round, he's going to get back to the bench that is Aaron Wan Bisaka and Diego Dalo is gonna start at the right, the left back. <coughs> Sorry, the right back on the left back. We are gonna welcome back Luke Shaw, and that's what I think. Luke Shaw is gonna get himself a slot into the starting 11 of Man United as he's one of those players that Eric Ten Hag doesn't, doesn't, um, doesn't risk to start even if they are coming in from injury to obviously get them a very good goal. That is Luke Shaw, so he doesn't want to obviously. <coughs> bench him and i think he's gonna give him a go because he was nearing his start again against Tottenham hotspur but he got a lot a last minute setback and the manager really got him out of the squad but i anticipate that he's going to play as the left back at that side on the right side of the central defense i think it's gonna be rafael veran ten Hag is taking no risks and if there is a trophy that he need, badly needs it's this one last season he won an fa cup sorry he won he won um, a Carabao Cup, and it will be a very good upgrade if at all he wins. <coughs> he wins an FA Cup. That is it. Then on the left side of the central defense, I don't think it's gonna be Harry Maguire or Johnny Evans. It's gonna be this man who came in and played 30 minutes in the game of Tottenham Hotspur. It's none other than Lisandro Martinez. So we anticipate Lisandro Martinez to play onto the left back of the side of Manchester United, and I think for the very first time in many months. We are going to be having a starting back four for the club of Manchester United like we all desire it to be looking because we know that the first choice right back at Man United is Dalo, the left back is Luke Shaw, 
The Central Defense Partnership is Lisandro Martinez and Rafael Veran, and it's been long since we last had these people kick the ball together. So, as it stands, these ones come into play, and we anticipate that they are gonna do the needful and obviously get us to where we are supposed to be as a club of Manchester United. Then, in the double pivot, I think it's gonna be Kobe Menu and Ericsson. That is it. It's gonna be Kobe Menu and Ericsson. The big question is why not Casemiro? I think there was something that was not okay with Casemiro. That's why he never came in through and really played in that game with Tottenham Hotspur because <clears throat> when they took off Ericsson, I thought that maybe Casemiro was the one coming in through, but I think the manager knew to eat that Casemiro had not yet met the standards to obviously play. And I think in a game of Newport, you bring in Casemiro and Ericsson, they get the job done and get in Casemiro to play <clears throat> some 30 minutes altogether and get him a very good comeback or welcome back uh welcome back uh 30 minutes and he'll obviously be in the mix so i believe that uh ericsson and kobe men will start and when they start then the other guy will just come in through later that is kazimiro then we go to the central well, let's go to the to the to the forwards we start off on the right side we're having ahmad diallo facundo pelestri has not yet left we are having anthony and alejandro ganacho and i think out of those four Ten Hag is going to go with this guy onto the right attacking side of the midfield. And guys, trust me not, I think he puts in better performances every time he's played as a right attacking midfielder. That is none other than Alejandro Ganacho, and I fancy him to be playing that side. That is Alejandro Ganacho. So, I hugely expect Alejandro Ganacho to be played as a right attacking midfielder into the stadium or into the game of Newport where we are going to be facing them in the FA Cup. And um, then the left side, I think it's going to be none other than Rashford. That is it. Rashford is going to start. And Rashford is really in a, in a very huge form. Ever since the game of Aston Villa, stats are really going his side. And you know, the game of football is all about stats, not about performances. Now, in the game of Aston Villa, he puts in an assist for the first goal, I think, for Ganacho. In the game of... Nottingham Forest he scores a goal, right? In the game of Wigan Athletic, FA Cup, third round, he goes ahead to score, sorry, to put in an assist for Diego Dallo. And in the game of Tottenham Hotspur, he's going ahead to score a goal, meaning that in the previous four games, he has four goal contributions. And he's one of those players that you would obviously predict and put your hand on to score when you're playing Newport in the FA Cup that means on Sunday. That is Marcus Rashford for you. So, after Marcus Rashford for you, I anticipate that Bruno Fernandes is going to be playing into the central attacking side of the midfield, playing behind Rasmus Hoyland, who really made, made it on target when you're playing against Tottenham Hotspur and scored his second Premier League goal of the season. And I think that can only act like a starter and a lot more is still in this guy. And um, I really think he's going to really go ahead and do the best for the club of Man United and I anticipate him to go ahead and really score goals on Sunday. That is Rasmus Hoyland because looks like the chemistry is building up between the front three of Man United and that is really some good news for we who really want to see to it that this guy gets chances in. So that is my predicted starting 11. I don't know what your thoughts are about it. Who would you start? Who wouldn't you start into that team of Man United? And let's go into what we call the head-to-head -head starts between Manchester United and Port Valley. We've been told that this will be the first ever competitive meeting meeting between Newport County and Man United. The Exiles have won just one of their last 23 meetings with top flight opponents in all competitions. Seven draws, right? Uh, 15 losses, beating Leicester City 2-1 in the FA Cup in 2018-2019. So, they went ahead to shock Manchester City and having gone ahead to shock them sorry they went ahead to shock Leicester City and that was really a shocker in 2018-2019 so this is the first competitive game between Man United and Newport secondly this this will be Manchester United's first FA Cup game in Wales since the 25 final against Arsenal when the Red Devils lost 5-4 on penalties 
following a 0-0 draw. Their only previous away game against Welsh opposition in the competition was 5-0 in a Wrexham. was a 5 win at Wrexham in January 1957. So we're really playing Wales. And remember, that was when we still played, I think, in Cardiff, right? But, but ever since the Wembley Stadium was renovated and refurbished, all games have been played at that side. Thirdly, Newport have progressed from just two of their eight FA Cup FA Cup fourth round ties, doing so in their first versus Huddersfield in 1948-49 to and most recent such fixtures versus Middlesbrough in 2018-2019. So they are not good when it comes to obviously thriving and obviously going into the next step. Then... Fourthly, Manchester United have progressed from 49 of their last 51 FA Cup ties against teams from outside the top league or top flight, failing only in 2009-2010 against Leeds United, you know, and Middlesbrough. Away from home, they are unbeaten in 28 matches in the FA Cup against non-top flight sides since losing to 2-0 to Bournemouth in 1984. And lastly, Marcus Rashford has either scored two or assisted two a goal in each of his last four appearances for Man United in all competitions, just one fewer goal involvement than he managed in his first 22 games this season. Two goals, three assists, that is Marcus Rashford for you, and that's what he was going to hate to put up. And I would love to obviously give him his flowers as Marcus Rashford because he's fighting hard to get back to where he deserves to be as a player. And I think in the Champions League, Rashford has like two assists, not so. So this season, he might obviously find himself really registering some good number of assists because in the Premier League, he has two assists and four goals. Those are six goal involvements. In the Champions League, he had two. That is it. So it shows you that he's really good and everything is really moving on well. So let's wait and see how that pans out. But my prediction for this game, let's go a 4 nil Man United. That is it. I believe we are going to do a 4 nil win over the side and we are gonna really cause a very huge annihilation to them and no sympathy should be really given to this team we should beat them to the nerve you know and they should obviously get understand that this is man united that's gonna hate to get in a new ceo for manchester city that is omal berardi so we wait and see how that pans out but with that starting 11 I guarantee you a win. I know everything in, pos in football is possible, but not right now. Because if there is anything that will spike the the rumors of sucking Eric Ten Hag, it should be this game if we don't win it. And after this game, I think we're going to be playing away at Wolverhampton Wanderers. That is in the midweek, either on Tuesday or Wednesday. And that will put us into a better position to cause a lot of damage to them. So, may the living to God bless you abundantly. My prediction is for Neil. What are your predictions? The Muslims, Juma Karim, Rokan David remains my name. I sign out for now. See you later. And I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Ciao, ciao. Bye-bye.